And so I want to say Boker Tov to everybody, and I hope it will be indeed a Boker Tov and a Yom Tov and a, a, a Shavua Tov and a Chodesh Tov and a Shana Tova and everything. It seems almost impossible to me. First of all, I want to apologize again for all of my uh, inabilities. Uh, but uh, I also uh, i am having a hard time. It seems impossible for me to uh, really reconcile uh, the fact that just three weeks ago, exactly three weeks ago, it was in the middle of Cholamoid Sukkot, and we were having our uh, wonderful, wonderful family, our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, Blia and Hara Blia and Hara, come visit us uh, on these days exactly three weeks ago. In fact... Tomorrow, three weeks ago, on that Thursday of Cholamoid, the grandchildren and great-grandchildren that came to visit us were my grandson Moshe with his lovely wife and family and children who live in Sterot. And little did we know on that Thursday, that lovely Thursday, Cholamoid Sukkot, Little did we know what lay in front of us, and that purely through chasdei Hashem, and I I can't, I'm much filled with this thankfulness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that my personal family were removed by the army safely, Baruch Hashem. And that they are with other people that were um, among the Pnuyim from Sterot. So they've been out of their home. All this while, that was just three weeks ago, Thursday. And Shabbat, we know what happened. It was that infamous day. It's very hard. It's really very hard, both on the personal level And of course, on the national level, it is very difficult. And what do we do? We turn to a Kadosh Baruch Hu. We turn to a Kadosh Baruch Hu. And we say Tehillim, and there are certain Tehillim that we say, and there are some Tehillim that I think are said the most. There's one particular parak of Tehillim that I would dare say, I would guess, is probably said more than any other. Every time I listen to a Chizuk broadcast, or not every time, but very close to every time, somebody will say, Shir Lamalot, Kuf Chaf Aleph, right? Shir Lamalot, Esa Enai El Heharim, Me Ayin Yavo Ezri. So I want you to talk about this Shir HaMalot. Why do we love it so much? The words are so very beautiful. I want you to talk a little bit about all the Shir HaMalot, though we don't normally say all of them in a time of Tzara, but specifically two of them. This one, the Esa Enai El HaRim, and Kuf Chaf Aleph, and Kuf Lamed Aleph. Just a little bit to share with you. Basically, we have, as always, a Pshat and a Medrash, especially when it comes to Kuf Chaf Aleph. And we can say that there is a person, person one speaking, and person two is answering him and reassuring him about his concerns. In fact, on a very simple level, we can understand it that the person one who is speaking is about to embark on something difficult, whether it be a journey, whether it be some new job. He's concerned. He is very concerned about whatever it is that he's embarking on. And so he says, Shir Lamalot. Esa Enai El Haharim. I lift my eyes to the mountains. May Ayin Yavo Ezri. From where will 
my help come. Ezri me'im Hashem. And he reassures himself. He says, I know where my help comes from. I'm looking at the hills because it's a natural tendency of a human being to look upward. Everybody looks upward when they seek help. And I'm lifting my eyes to the hills, but the hills are not what I'm really seeking help from. Ezri me'im Hashem. Hashem gives me help. Why Hashem? Because Oseh Shemayim Ba'aretz. He HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that made the heavens and the earth. So let's step back for a moment. I want to remind you of something you probably all know, but I like to review these basic facts. There are 15 prakim in Sefer Tehillim that begin with Shir Hama'alot, one of which, so 14 start, Hama'alot, one starts, Shir Lama'alot. And that's the one that we're talking about right now. Chazal say, why Shir Hama'alot? Why are they called Shir Hama'alot? Answer one that is probably most familiar to us. At the time that we were fortunate enough to have a Beit HaMikdash, there were 15 steps that went from the Ezrat Nashim to the Azara, to the Ezrat Anashem, the area that the men were permitted to go to. Fifteen steps. And on those fifteen steps, the Levian would stand with their musical instruments and they would sing at specific times, especially during the time that the Karbanotamid were given. And because of these 15 steps, and steps are ma'alot, these particular shirim, 15 of which, are called shire ha-ma'alot. Whether the Leviyim sang these specific ones, or these specific ones and more, I'm not really certain. We don't really know. But this is what we are taught. Aside from that, Another reason is given for it to be called Shira Malot is because it's a typical poetic form. And you know, if you walk up a flight of stairs or down a flight of stairs and you want to be especially careful, or you're my age and you need to be especially careful, then you would put one foot down and then put the other foot down on the same step before you take the following step. And so it would be like you're walking step, stop, step, stop. And all of these shirei ha-ma'alot, their particular poetic form is that there is a certain word that is repeated in one pasuk and then part of something, the idea or the word is repeated. Step, stop, step, stop. And that this form of poetry is like a flight of stairs that a person is going on very carefully. Step, stop. And so it's called Shir Hama'alot. Another reason, yet another reason, is that, you know, when we talk about somebody being on a certain ma'ala, He's on a certain madriga. We have steps again. A person is on a certain level, spiritual level. These shirei ha-ma'alot are all very, very beautiful. They are very spiritual. And they raise our ma'ala. They raise our spiritual level so that we feel that we are rising a ma'ala. We are rising a madriga. They do something for us. And so, basically, Chazal say, why is there one, the one that we're talking about, that is shir la ma'alot? Because shir ha ma'alot is a song of steps, of degrees. Sometimes you've seen that translation, a song of degrees. 
Why is this one sheer lama alo two degrees? Because there is an aspect of this particular parak and tihilim, this capital, or whatever you want to call it, tihilim. There is an aspect of it that is really speaking about the time of the gu'ula. And in the time of gu'ula, there will be a special ma'ala. There will be a special flight of stairs that a Kaddish Baruch Hu will create that will be established for the tzaddikim to be able to go from wherever their place of abode is straight up before the kisei hakavod to put any tefillah that they have, any bakasha, any request to put it before the kisei hakavod, right before Kaddish Baruch Hu himself. So this is a shir. This is a song for the ma'alot, la ma'alot, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will create in the time of the Geula, which is, I think, an exceptionally beautiful idea. So once again, we go back to the conversation. And the conversation is, we're talking about a person who's about to embark upon something a little bit difficult. He's a little bit frightened. And he says, Shir Amalot, I'm going to lift Shir La, excuse me. I'm going to lift my eyes to the hills, to the mountains. I am seeking help, but I know I am reassuring myself that Ezri Meim Hashem, that my help comes from Hashem. Who is the creator, the owner of heavens and earth. And his friend, or whoever he is talking to, says, You are right in having complete faith that your Ezra, that your help comes from Hashem, because he will, and I am praying for you, I am davening for you that he will not let your leg stumble or your foot stumble. He will not allow you to stumble and fall. Al yom nun shomrecha. And I daven that he who guards you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, will not fall into a sleep. Yanum is a little dremel going into, not paying attention, kind of going into a little bit of a state of sleep, not a deep sleep. And the original person, the one that's afraid, the one that's going to embark on a journey or something new, a new stage in his life says, I know that. I have full confidence. And on the pshat level, the reason that we love this Mizmor Tehillim so much is because it exudes pure confidence. So the person speaking says, I am confident, Hine, I know, Hine is, of course. Lo yanum, the lo yishan shomer Yisrael. I am totally confident, don't we know, that he, the guardian of Yisrael, does not fall into a light sleep, the yanum, and doesn't fall into a deep sleep. That doesn't happen. There is no such thing before Hashem. There is no Yanum and no Yishan. He does not ever fall asleep. And the person who is answering him says, Good. You have the right attitude. Hashem Shomrecha. Hashem Tzilcha Al Yad Yeminecha. And so he continues with reassuring him at the same time as he is giving him a bracha. He is doing both. He is saying, may Hashem indeed guard you, and Hashem is your guardian. And you have that wonderful confidence. He is your shade. Shade is protection. Silcha. He is your protection. On your right hand, your protection, your right hand, where you must most need it, because most people use their right hands. Though Hashem is your guardian, I am so glad that you have that confidence, and I give you a bracha that that confidence should be fulfilled in what will happen. 
Your mom Hashem Yakeka, not only should he watch you, but he should keep you even from normal elementary things that happen on a regular day, things that are in nature. By day, may the sun not harm you. The Yareach Balayla and the Yareach in the middle of the night, may even the natural phenomena that surround you be protective of you. Hashem Yishmarcha Mikolra. And may Hashem guard you from all evil. Yishmor et nafshecha. Guard your life. Hashem Yishmor Tzaitcha Uvawacha. May Atava Adolam. And may Hashem continue to guard you on no matter what endeavor you are embarking on and whatever endeavor you may set out upon in the future. May Hashem guard your going out and your coming in from now forever. May your confidence always continue. And the beautiful thing about that Shira Malot is that confidence that comes from every pasuk, that confidence of David Melech who was Ne'im's Mirot Yisrael, the sweet singer of Yisrael, who was able to express it. Um, interestingly, the Medrash does not exude that confidence at all. The Medrash Shochatov, in fact, says that this Perak of Tehillim, this capital, is talking about Yom Hadin, the day of judgment of a Kadosh Baruch Hu that will take place at the beginning of the time of the Geula. And it says, Am Yisrael, when facing judgment day, will be afraid. They will be afraid. How can they stand up to judgment before HaKadosh Baruch Hu? After all, we are all only human beings. We need help. And so we say, Shir Lamalot, a song for that ascending that we will do on that great Yom Hadin of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that will come about Ba'acharit HaYamim at the end of days, you know what I will do because I will be afraid. I will lift my eyes to the mountains. And very, very often in the written Torah, when we use the term mountains, we are talking about our ancestors who were mountains. Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yosef, Moshe, David himself. I will lift my eyes to the mountains. I will lift my eyes to my great ancestors. And I will say, please come help me on this awesome day in which I stand before HaKadosh Baruch Hu in fear. I am quaking. I am really frightened. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to judge me. And I need my zuchot avot. I need the merit of my fathers to help me, to come stand with me, to argue my case before the heavenly throne. And yet I know, deep within myself, that that is not enough. It is not the avot that will help me. But on the day of judgment, Ezri Meyem Hashem, my help will come directly from a Kadosh Baruch Hu, who will remember who I am, who will take into consideration who I am, what I try to do, because he is Oseshamayim Va'aretz. He is the one that created the heavens and earth. 
He created the human being. He knows the weaknesses of the human being. And Baruch Hashem, thank God, HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows who I am. And he knows my foibles. And he knows my weaknesses. And on that day of judgment, I am trying to convince myself that my help will come from Hashem. And of course, this parak goes on and says, Al yitain lamot raglecha. He will not let your foot stumble. And this is really HaKadosh Baruch Hu speaking. He is saying, human being Jew, do not worry. On that great judgment day when I will come to judge all human beings, I will not let your foot stumble. I will help you because you see I am never asleep. I am up all the time. I am watching and I am guarding you. I am your protection and I will guard you just like I did throughout your normal life. When we come to that future day, may I have ad olam forever. I will be your guardian. And so we turn from confidence in the pshat to bitachon in the Medrash. And once again, we are standing in awe before that incredible bitachon of David HaMelech. And to me, personally, probably because I am a woman and because I am a mother and a grandmother and a great-grandmother, and Baruch Hashem, I'm going to boast, a great, great grandmother with Birchot Hashem. Because that's who I am, there is an image that David HaMelech gave us in Kuf Lamed Aleph that appeals to me beyond my ability to describe but I will try my very best to make it as clear as I can, but I think I won't need to because it is an image that is so utterly beautiful. It's a very, very short shir ha-ma'alot. It is a shir ha-ma'alot, not to the steps, but on the steps. Le David. Shir ha-ma'alot for David. Hashem. David says, Lo gavali bi, v'lo ramu enai, v'lo halachti bigdolot uveniflaot mimeni. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem, David says, this is very personal. Shira malot li David. This is David speaking personally. He's saying, Hashem, please, please look at me. And see that I never put on airs. Lo gavali be. My heart didn't swell because of my accomplishments. I did not allow my heart to swell, to take credit, to think that I am the one who's responsible for everything that I did. Lo ramu enai, when we use the expression of lifting your eyes, it's as though you're looking over, all over human beings. I never did that. I never placed myself in a position where I thought that I was above other human beings. And I didn't make myself feel great. I didn't feel that I was especially great because of the things that happened to me. Imlo, and here the word imlo, the words imlo are like a shvua, like the language of Tanakh, when we say imlo, and it means ani nishba. I swear, shiviti v'domamti nafshi, that I try to level, to lower my soul. I try to make it level with everybody else. V'domamti is quiet, and I try to quiet it from feeling boastful. I quieted my soul. 
and I made it level. Kigamul alei imo. Like a baby who has just been taken off the breast. Gamul is a baby who, in the English word is weaned, who stops nursing, who lies on his mother's breast, though he is not nursing anymore. Kigamul alei nafshi. My soul is like that baby who has stopped nursing. But nevertheless, where does that baby get his comfort? Where does that baby feel is the source of love in the world? His mother. That baby has full confidence, full bitachon from his mother. Yachel Yisrael al Hashem. So may Hashem, may excuse me, Yisrael have full Yachel is tikva. May they hope, may they have total confidence and hope in Hashem. And again, we have that phrase, may Atava Adolam, now and forever. This time the Medrash fills in for us in a very positive way. Same Medrash, the Medrash Shochatov. The Medrash Shochatov teaches, David Melech is saying, very personally, Hashem, lo gavali bi, when? When was I afraid that my heart would become too proud? When Shmuel Hanavi anointed me. In other words, the first very big thing that happened to David was when Shmuel Hanavi came to the house of his father Yishai and chose him above all the brothers, above all Am Yisrael, chose him and put the Shem and Hamishcha on his head. Lo gavali bi. I did not allow it to go to my head, to go into my heart and think that I was a very special person. The lo ramu nai, and I didn't allow my eyes to look over all other people and think that I was greater when the second great thing happened to me, which was when I fought with Goliath, that great giant that threatened the army of Am Yisrael. And everybody was afraid, but I decided that I could fight him, and I won. I killed him. I did not allow it to go to my head. Velo halachti big dolot, says the Medrash. Big dolot is when I brought the Aron to Yerushalayim. When I was able to return the Aron that had been hidden for several years, for the years that Shaul was king, I was able to bring that Aron back to Yerushalayim safely. After some trouble at first. And nifla otmi many, that which was really nifla, that which was totally and truly wondrous. And that was when I was able to successfully return to Yerushalayim after the rebellion of my son of Shalom. And I left Yerushalayim in disgrace wanting there not to be battles, face-to-face -face battles in the holy city. And I was returned, HaKadosh Baruch Hu returned me to my throne, and I was able to once again rule. So says the Medrash, David is saying, all of those wondrous things that happened to me, I never allowed it to go to my head and think that it was my own ma'asim that caused it. I knew that it came from you, just as a baby knows that all good comes from his or her mother. Just like a baby learns because he gets his sustenance from his mother. So that even when that sustenance comes from another source and that original food 
no longer comes from the mother. The one thing that comforts the baby is his mother's arms, is when his mother takes that baby in her arms and he knows all good comes from there. How does that baby learn this? Because you see, that baby has had the experience of all good coming from his mother. Do you see what David Melech is teaching us? He is saying what we need to realize, to recognize, and to always know deep within our soul is that all good comes from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. So when we might sometimes feel that we are in a time of danger, when we feel that we are not as close to heaven as we normally feel, when we feel that there's something closed, there is something locked up, we need to remember that all good that ever happened to us throughout our lifetime came from that source. It came straight from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, straight from on high. That is where our good comes. And when we remind ourselves of that, we are able to put ourselves in the arms of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We are able to feel that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with us because the memory the knowledge, the realization, the confidence that we were talking about in Ms. Markov Chavalev, the confidence and the bitachon, they are there because we know that all good that was given to us came from that source. And so David says, Yachel Yisrael El Hashem, he is talking to us, Yisrael today, I'm Yisrael today, all of us, no matter where we are. Yachel Yisrael Hashem, and my friends, of course you know, I am talking to myself. I am talking to my children. I am talking to my grandsons who are out in the Shetach, wherever they are at present. Have hope, have faith, trust in Hashem, in His Protection. Bezrat Hashem. Me'atav ad olam. From now and forever. May we be zoche, my dear friends, to really see Yeshua Telokeinu in the very, very near future. I'm ready for it today. It's okay. I can do it today. I don't have too much to do. I'll, I'll, I'll manage. Yeshua Telokeinu, we are hoping, we are praying, we are waiting, and we are using the words of David HaMelech to help us, to strengthen us, to give us the right focus. Thank you for your attention.